this week on the show, we have spiritual master, international speaker, author, YouTuber, and entrepreneur, Sri Arkarshana. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding why we talk ourselves out of things, even though we know it's good for us. The reality is we've all had those moments where an opportunity has been presented to us that we know is good for us or even something we've always hoped for. But yet, when the time comes to take action, we talk ourselves out of it. So why does this happen? On a scientific level, our brains are programmed to protect us from anything that it perceives as risk or danger, to prevent us from experiencing pain. This is why it's vital to silence your mind and reroute your thinking when it starts to cause you to doubt opportunities that you know will be beneficial for you. Ultimately, fear and doubt is a form of self-sabotage. Successful people have the same doubts and fears that everyone else has, but in those moments, they turn their thinking on focusing on all the endless possibilities that can come out of the opportunity, opposed to how scary it might feel to be temporarily uncomfortable, leaving familiar territory. The next time you find yourself overthinking a situation or being doubtful of an opportunity that you know has value, reroute your thinking from switching from doubt to seeing the infinite possibilities that can come from you taking a leap of faith. As Stephen Hogan quotes, most people miss great opportunities because of their misconception of time. Don't wait, the time will never be just right. Stay tuned coming up after the break. I'm curious to get your take on, you know, the 3D reality and all of that. There's different realities and in terms of, um, you know, kind of being stuck in the matrix. I mean, it sounds complex, but I want to get your take on it. It's, yeah, it sounds complex. It's just because we don't really learn this type of thing mm -hmm. at school. But, uh, but what we do learn and what we do understand through science is that energy is everything and everything is energy so what does that mean we are energy we also learned that energy cannot be created nor destroyed it can only be transferred what does that mean it means that we never die because our energy can never die mm. it just moves mm -hmm. on it it transforms so this form our human will transform into a different form we also learn in science that everything is interconnected uh, and all energy is one energy, right? It's all different subdivisions. So what does this mean then? It means that for sure there is something beyond just what we see and what we know, this, uh, as you call, 3D, 3D reality. There is something beyond that. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have spiritual master, international speaker, author, YouTuber, and entrepreneur, Sri Arkarshana. Over the years, his work has reached out to over 35 million people globally through social media platforms and live events. Sri, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you, Dariela, and thank you for having me on your show. <laughs> Thanks for being here. As I was telling you before we started recording, I'm a big fan of your work. I've been watching your YouTube videos for years now, and anytime I need a boost of inspiration, I, I go to your videos. So I'm, it's, a, it's an honor to have you on the show. Thank so, you, thank you. So let's talk about your journey. I know that at just 25 years old, um, you were financially free as an entrepreneur. So tell us about that period in your life. Um, uh... Well, my, my father was a, an entrepreneur, so he always taught me that making money is important. And uh, so um, uh, I was not very good at school, not very academic. So I had no option but to go into work. So maybe 17, 18, I was already dropping out of school and then started working at some burger vans, flipping burgers, and then went to working in restaurants and then decided that I want to start my own restaurant so I started to grow a franchise and uh, I went into different investments and uh, as you said before around like 25 or so um, I managed to buy my dream car dream house and live the lifestyle that a lot of people desire um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, that's amazing. I mean, especially as an entrepreneur, it's not easy to achieve those goals. But I know that you did find that you weren't happy, even though you had material success. And that's a lot of people find that, right? So once they reach that um, level of success, they find that money doesn't buy them happiness. So for you, when was that period when you realized that uh, material possessions is not what makes you happy? Yeah, I think it's because I, I think it's what you just said there. A lot of people think that their happiness is on the other side of money or if people see money as success. And so when I had that money, as I mentioned before, I was buying all these materials that people dream of. And yes, you, you get happy at first because you feel like, hey, you've proven that point and you've made it or something. But after some time, that, that, that celebration kind of wears off and you start asking yourself the question, you know, what is the purpose of all of this, you know? And everybody asks that big question, at least once in their lifetime, they'll, all, they'll always come to a point where they say, what's the point in life? Why are we here? And that happened to me. And, uh, but it happened to me on a very deep level because that got me into a, a, a becoming depressed. Uh, I'm talking about actually feeling suicidal because I can see the meaning of life, you know? So it was a very interesting phase of uh, my life. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important that we talk about that because I feel, especially after the pandemic, a lot of people are going through mental health problems. Like we see it in the news of people who have committed suicide and it's a serious issue. And I don't think mental health is something that we should, we talk about as much as we should. So how did you get through that period, that dark cloud? How did you get through that um, and kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel during that dark period in your life? Yeah, I would say that, uh, you know, I would say I stumbled upon it on a more conscious level. I will say there was some universal guidance that got me to a, a new realization because I was so depressed and in uh, suddenly this door opened up where somebody would ask me to go to a trip to Kenya on a volunteer trip um, to help some orphanage. And initially my answer was, no, I, I don't want to go there. Why would I want to do that, you know? But I remember uh, that evening I went out drinking with my friends, I, like, like I usually uh, did back then to try and numb the depression, I guess. And I, I remember saying to my friends at the time, I said, um, you know, there's this girl who asked me to go to Kenya to help at some orphanage or something with her. And they said to me, they said, don't go. And I said, well, why? And they said, it's really dangerous out there. Mm -hmm. And imagine at that time, my, my, my thought process was dangerous. That, that may be my opportunity to disappear you know it was, it was so messed up at that time so i actually mm -hmm. said yes i'll go and it was actually on the first day i would say that i pretty much got my answer because the moment i got to kenya and then we went out ventured up into the mountains and then seen these kids and the children that needed help actually when i arrived there it was astonishing because the first thing i seen was these kids playing kicking this bottle around the the floor they were cheering they were celebrating they were kicking it around it was just skin and bones they didn't have cloves or anything and and then there's this old lady standing outside this mud hut and she's like cheering for them with the biggest smile the most beautiful smile i've ever seen in my life and i remember that moment because when i seen that i burst into tears I was asking myself the question, I said, why is it that these people seem to have nothing, but they seem to be having the time of their life, and why am I so depressed and not wanting life every day? And the more I hung out with them and spent time with them, I realized it wasn't just me venturing out to go and help them, it was actually them that were healing me, because they were showing me what happiness was in life and where happiness comes from and happiness comes from life itself mm. and so asking this question about you know people feeling depression and feeling all of this i think that sometimes maybe it needs that perspective to understand that a lot of the people who are actually in depression may have been through certain challenges or maybe going through some challenges right now but 
if we really think about it, by just looking at our hands being able to move right now, being able to breathe or being able to see and being able to feel that gratitude to say, hey, wait there a second. You mean I'm, I, I still get the blessing to be alive right now, to, to witness life? I feel having that attitude of gratitude is kind of the beginning of that awakening because you start to realize that everything is just perspective. There are literally people right now in this very moment who may be losing their life right now. Mm-hmm. And then, or going through something extremely traumatic. And when we come to that comparison, we start realizing that why, and we ask the question, why would God or universe, you know, put us through our challenges right now. And it may just be that challenge is a blessing in disguise. It's, it's room for growth. Mm-hmm. I always say to people, we grow through what we go through. And mm-hmm. so I feel like the first thing I would suggest for everybody is to start having that attitude of gratitude and just to think of everything that you do have, not everything you don't have. And mm-hmm. once you start appreciating life, your life appreciates. So I think that, that that's just where I would go first. Mm-hmm. I think that's absolutely true. Uh, a few weeks ago, I, I did an intro about, you know, changing your mindset in terms of, you know, sometimes when we focus on what we're lacking in our lives, um, even if we have everything, that's when we become depressed or sad. But as soon as we switch our mindset and think about, you know, the things we do have, as you said, an attitude of gratitude, even if it's if we don't have a lot of money, but we think about the little money we have or we don't have love in our life, but we think about all the relationships that make us feel special, um, whether it's a friend, or even if it's one person, just focusing on that one thing can make you feel grateful. So I, I like that perspective. I think it's very spot on. Um, you know, so you went to the Himalayan mountains for vigorous mind body training. So I want to talk about that to become a spiritual master. So tell us about that period in your life. And also what were some challenges you went through at that time? Mm. So it was, uh, back in 2019, mm, I was called by a Himalayan yogi. His name's Grandmaster Aksha, and he invited me to a journey in the Himalayas with him. I remember when I first heard that request, I thought it was a little bit strange because what is this thing? Is it a retreat? Are there many people there? What's happening? But it was kind of a little bit mysterious because it was only inviting me. Uh, Apparently I was chosen for this. So at that time I was a little bit confused, but I thought, you know, I have everything that I want in life and uh, I have not also I'm detached from the outcome and I'm open for the what the universe has for me so I said okay let's go let's see what it's about and quite honestly the thing that I was not looking that forward to back then was actually the vigorous yoga training as you Mm -hmm. just mentioned because I wasn't I wouldn't class myself as flexible before that and so I, I it was very tough for me But anyway, I just said yes, and I went out there. But the interesting thing happened in not just building um, the body, the strength, the flexibility, the stability and balance so that it can be in sync with the mind, the mindset, and then lead to your spiritual energy, your spiritual power, your your energetic uh, energy uh, forces. And it wasn't just about that because What was really strange to me at the time was on the third day, we did a very deep meditation practice and it was some third eye activation and suddenly, zap, I would enter somewhere else and I would go through this whole journey and then come back and then realize that only a few seconds had passed by Mm, and that started the whole fascination of wait there a second what is this yoga thing and yeah. why am I here and you know what, what that's just really strange what just happened there so the skeptical mind was challenging it and saying hey this is this you must have made it up you must have imagined you must have fell asleep and you must have dreamt or something like that yeah and uh, and then um, as we continue through that journey, every single day going into these alternate dimensions of our multidimensional being and all this, 
which may sound really strange to some people because it was strange to me at the time, I realized that yoga is far deeper than what people think. There's a mystical aspect to it where people just think people just think that it's just some body flexibility movement, some stretching. But way beyond that, it is you being able to go beyond your limited physical realm to connect to your uh, highest infinite being level. And when you are able to do that, you gain what we can class as spiritual powers and those spiritual powers we can use in this physical reality for healing, for manifestation, for fulfilling a deeper purpose. And so it was very strange because it allowed me to see, foresee what's coming you know, on this planet and also allowed me to see and connect the dots of my journey so far to find my what people will refer to as highest calling, you know? Mm -hmm. That's the amazing thing about even meditation is when you really sit there in silence, you almost feel an outer body experience where you really feel like you transcend. So that's the thing I love about meditation. You really feel that that peace. I'm curious to get your take on, you know, the 3D reality and all of that. There's different realities and in terms of, um, you know, kind of being stuck in the matrix. I mean, it sounds complex, but I want to get your take on it. It's yeah, it sounds complex. It's just because we don't really learn this type of thing mm -hmm. at school. But uh, but what we do learn and what we do understand through science is that energy is everything and everything is energy. So what does that mean? We are energy. We also learn that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. What does that mean? It means that we never die because our energy can never die. It just moves mm -hmm. on, it, it transforms. So this form, our human, will transform into a different form. We also learn in science that everything is interconnected uh, and all energy is one energy, right? It's all different subdivisions. So what does this mean then? It means that for sure there is something beyond just what we see and what we know, this, uh, as you call, 3D, 3D reality. There is something beyond that. Mm -hmm. And so whether we call it space or whether we call it uh, 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 aliens or whatever we want to call it, that there is existence out there. And through our spiritual awakening journey, what is what is our goal? Our goal is to venture out and uh, explore the levels of consciousness to understand that wait there a second what is actually going on out there but the biggest fascination for me back then was not saying hey i want to do space exploration and understand if aliens are real or any other beings is real that wasn't the fascination my biggest shift and understanding and awakening was when I realized that something that happens outside affects something that happens inside. Mm -hmm. what, what, what does that mean? It means like, um, let's take an outer reality of planet Earth and take two tectonic plates. They can do a little bit of a touch, just a tiny, tiny bit of a kiss, and it would create a huge effect internally on planet earth and so when i realized this concept that hey something outside affects something inside and something inside affects something outside then our manifestations can be excelled if only we learn how to connect with the higher source mm -hmm. and communicate you know so i think that i mean it's obviously a journey it's a learning journey but there, it holds a lot of um uh, power, uh, not, not, not just yoga, it's way beyond that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about, you know, on your page, you speak a lot about um, manifestation and the law of attraction and being a, a vibrational match for the things you desire. So for our viewers that don't really grasp that concept, how would you explain it? If I smile, you smile. That is law of attraction. People who say, I don't, I don't, some people, they say, I don't believe in law of attraction. Mm. I say, mm. look, 
spend one day smiling at everybody and and rec record how many smiles you get back. Spend the next day frowning at everybody and count how many frowns or how many smiles you get back and you'll see there'll be a difference. So what is that? Is alike energies naturally come together, right? It's natural. You smile more, all the happy people, they'll come and say hello to you. You complain, who will come to you? All the rest of the complainers will come and complain with you. Mm -hmm. You see, that's law of attraction on the, on, the, on the basic level. Then some people, they say, Man, this manifestation stuff, I don't believe it. Prove to me, manifestation is true. I say, actually, it's very simple. I ask people, I say, how did you manifest your breakfast this morning? And people say, that's not manifestation. I just went to the shops and I got my, I, I, I ordered my breakfast. I say, but wait there a second. Let's ask the questions in the sequence. Did you first think about having breakfast before you got the breakfast? They say, yes. I say, okay, cool. So you thought about it. That's what we do in manifestation. We think. I said, I asked the question. I said, did you have a desire an emotional or we can say a vibrational desire for breakfast before you ordered it or before you got it or before you made it they said yes obviously i had the desire i said great that's what we teach in manifestation i say hey did you believe that you were going to achieve the breakfast did you believe the breakfast will come to you did you believe believe that did you have trust that your cereal will go in the bowl and you will consume it. Did you trust? They say, yes, I did. I said, okay, so that's what we teach in manifestation. And I said, when the uh, delivery was coming, okay, I said, did it just come itself without you having any action whatsoever? No verbal conversation, no going to the shops, no buying anything, no. Did, did you need to take any action at all for the breakfast to arrive? They said, yes. I said, exactly. Action we teach in law of attraction. And I said, the final thing, I say, when the parcel was delivered to you or when it was in front of you, the bre breakfast, were you open to receiving it? Or were you like, no, I'm not worthy of this? Or were you saying, yes, actually, I'm, I, I, I'll consume it. Yeah. And if you were open to receiving, that's what we teach in manifestation. So I say, hey, it's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same. Yeah. I think that most people don't feel worthy um, or they just they don't feel worthy of love and all the great things life has to offer. And they might not even know it. It could be on a subconscious level that they have these beliefs. So when that's they try right. to manifest things on a subconscious level, you know, whether it's love or money, they don't feel that they really deserve it. I was having a conversation with a friend the other day and, you know, my friends come to me for advice and she was saying like, I don't feel worthy. And this is an amazing girl. And who is the smart, one of the smartest girls I know. And she just didn't feel worthy. And she's like, how do I feel worthy? How do I feel that I deserve these things? You know, so for people that have that subconscious belief that they, they're not worthy of love, they're not worthy for, of money and all these things, what would you say to them to you know overcome those blocks? What are some steps that they can take? So I think that um, things like inner child meditations are, 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 are very good meditations to do because a lot of this unworthiness comes from our preconditioning from, from childhood, M majority does, from the ages of zero to seven when we're in the theta brain wave. We consume a lot of this programming, the way we observe our parents, our friends, our family, our, you know, it's all the conditioning. And so when we do things like inner child meditation or even timeline therapy, what are we doing here? We are going to revisit the past, finding where those uh, experiences are whether it's a negative or disempowering experience or whether it be a traumatic experience when we find it we can use some uh, something like nlp where we can reprogram the mind to become uh from the negative to the positive then we detach from the negative once we do things like that we'll find that you know uh, 
every day we feel like we, we, we don't feel like we're not good enough anymore. So we, we remove that negativity. And I always say there's like three layers to this. I say, number one, we can do the cognitive reframing, which is what we just shared there, the pain to pleasure shift. The second thing I would recommend is affirmations. By every single day, just doing affirmations, saying I am enough, I love myself, I am powerful, I'm beautiful. Affirmations are very powerful. And then finally, what I would say is, um, for people who want to go deep into it, you can do some healing, find an energy healer and do some healing practices because a lot of stored energy may be here. So even through a lot of the yoga practices that we do is teaching people how to use yoga to activate and release past energies and blockages. Very nice. And I, I also feel that when people try to manifest, they're so attached to the outcome. So whether it's, you know, manifesting a partner or money, they're so attached to the outcome that they, you know, they keep checking for uh, the results. So how do we detach? How do we truly detach from from the desires we have once we put them out into the universe? Uh huh. That's a very good question. Um that the problem usually occurs when people have the need when they have the need then they have the attachment like they need money they feel they need love so they are thinking where is it where is it where is it every single day they're thinking where is it but the moment they have that need it's a lack so the understanding has to be when i have no need but i am open for so what I always say to people is I say a very simple affirmation or mantra people can hold every single day is to say to the universe, universe, I'm open for what you have to deliver. I have my intentions. I will work towards that manifestation. Yet at the same time, you deliver it whenever you want, however you want, because I have full trust that it's coming my way. So I think like a, a mantra and an affirmation will really help because it reminds yourself, it reminds you that, hey, wait there a second, we are always in co-creation with the universal forces. So it's not just you by yourself. And so when you do that, you are working with the universe. Another thing I would suggest is that people practice presence of mind. When people have an attachment to outcome, they're always thinking about future. I hope it's going to happen tomorrow. I hope it's going to happen later. Why has it not happened yet? But when people focus in the now, when they practice presence of mind, they are living happy in every moment. And when we're happy in every moment, what happens is time passes by. We are not thinking of the outcome because we're not future focused and the outcome is then delivered because we've surrendered our energies into this moment here now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's very important is living in the present. That's one of my goals for 2023, you know, not living in the future. When you're a very driven person, sometimes you're you're always thinking about future and striving and striving uh, opposed to enjoying what you have already. Right. <laughs> so I, I think that's uh, also I, I want to talk about your success as well. I mean, you haven't given up the the finer things in life you're known as the yogi with the lamborghini so how do you find the balance between being spiritual and also you know enjoying the fruits of your labor that you've consciously created uh -huh. it's interesting in this world usually we see this divide people with a lot of money and then the more spiritual conscious people mm -hmm. the woo woo people the tree huggers you know yeah. And there's this clean divide where they don't understand each other most of the time. These people here are looking at the tree huggers and thinking, you crazy people, just go and get a job already. Do something with your life. These tree huggers or these uh, spiritual crowd are looking at these people and saying, you don't understand life. You're chasing something and it's all material, but you're a spiritual being, right? You, and it's not about money. It's about happiness. Live in love and happiness and compassion now. So these people are thinking this. but exactly what you said there the secret is actually the bridge you have to bridge that gap why is because we are spiritual beings having a temporary human experience so what does that mean we are metaphysical beings having a physical experience and the struggle i see with these people is they find it hard to find happiness and fulfillment. They think it's in the material. The struggle with these people are, 
they are mostly happy when their eyes are closed in meditation or they're doing some yoga practice or something. But when they open their eyes, a lot of these people are actually struggling financially. And what does that mean? They struggle to pay bills. They struggle to look after their kids, their family. There's a lot of things they want to do. They want to change the world. They want to go out and help people and help charities and light workers and heal people. But at the same time, they're stuck in a job they don't enjoy. Why? Because they haven't been able to do the thing they speak about, which is I am abundance. I am wealth. I am one with universe. Yeah. At the same time, when they open their eyes, they're not really abundant. Mm. You know, they can say they're abundance inside. Yes. But what about the outside? Because you're here in this temporary physical experience. And that's why our message is always for people to understand, okay, what is, how do we play this game then? How do we strike that balance? Right? I always say to people, go, go in material world, venture out, own all the materials and come to the realization that materials don't make you happy. Then go, go venture into spirituality, detach from everything. And then realize, come to the realization that, wait there a second, money in this physical world is important we mm -hmm. eat because of money. Uh, we look after our family because of money our shelters because of money and then understand that hey we will always be infinite spiritual beings but our material world is limited so what does that mean yes be kind be compassionate be of service but at the same time allow yourself to enjoy the abundance in this physical reality yeah. while we are here. Why not? Yeah. You know, why not? Why, why should a spiritual person need to be meditating in uh, the poorest of conditions? Why? Yeah. Why can a, why, why a person cannot be full of love and compassion yet at the same time sit on a first class seat on the plane? Why? Yeah. You know, we should enjoy comfort, you know? So I think that it's very important. Yes, learn the wealth game, learn to become wealth conscious. But the more, most important thing is don't let wealth consume you. Don't let it, don't let you think that wealth is everything. No, no, no. Understand that happiness is from within. Go by all means, venture into wealth and material world, but don't be owned by it. Mm -hmm. When anything is ever lost, don't get upset. It's fine. Detachment, you mm -hmm. see? So I think that that's most important. You know, I am not happy because of the Lamborghini, uh, but it's nice to experience a Lamborghini. But at the same time, uh, in reality, I don't enjoy driving the Lamborghini because it's not that comfortable, but it's a nice <laughs> adrenaline sometimes when you want to feel an adrenaline. So I can venture out into that. But it doesn't, I don't allow it to own me. So if I, one day I lost the Lamborghini, that's fine. If one day I lost all the money, that's still fine. Because it's the detachment, but mm. open for everything. And I think that is the secret. Needing, uh, knowing and allowing yourself to be open for everything. Everything mm -hmm. is spirituality. Yeah. But at the same time, attached to nothing. Mm -hmm. I love that. It, it's about balance, right? It's, it's not being attached to you know, material world, but also why not, it's energy, why not be abundant in this life and, you know, and have everything that you want because our time here is temporary, right? So I like that uh, viewpoint. And, you know, Shri, I always like to end the show on an inspirational note. Um, so for any of our viewers that are just going through a hard time, especially with the holidays, a lot of people are sad, they've lost loved ones, maybe they're just not feeling the love. What would you say to encourage and uplift them, especially since we're going into a new year? I think to understand uh, that we cannot connect the dots looking forward. We can only connect them looking backwards. A lot of the time when we look back at our lives, we will realize all the different trials and tribulations and challenges we've been through, we've gone through and we've grown through. We are only who we are today because of every, everything we've grown through. So while we're experiencing everything right now, whether that be health, whether that be relationship, love, whether that be money, wealth, it doesn't matter which pillar this is in that we are experiencing the trouble in, right? Always re remember that universe will never give you anything that you cannot handle. Everything that is there, they say a challenge is a blessing in disguise. Why? Because it's allowing you to grow. 
If you imagined a life of zero challenges, it's it would be like you playing a computer game, a new computer game, and they say, what, what do I need to do here? They say, nothing. You just sit there and breathe. You just hold X and breathe. You would never want to play that game because you'll be bored. It'll be meaningless. You see, the purpose of life is to grow through life. The challenges play a part of that. So instead of focusing on why is everything happening to me? We shift the language to say, hey, what if everything was actually happening for me? Yeah. Instead of focusing on all the problems and play, playing this victim, we play the creator mindset in saying, hey, I create the life that I desire based on my thoughts, based on my energy. So where do I choose to focus my energy right now? Because the thing is, if I decide to choose to focus my energy towards all the problems that's happening right now, whatever I focus on expands. Maybe it's better to stay solution focused, keep my head up high. If I can look up, I can move up. So always remember, how does a child learn to walk? We learn to walk by falling. We fall several, several times, then we learn to walk. I think that's, that's great advice. Shri, thank you so much for being on the show today. Continue your inspirational work. You're helping a lot of people, more people than you know, uh, just watching your videos and getting that burst of inspiration or even a new perspective, which I think is, you know, is amazing. Even if you can watch a video and get a different perspective on life and to motivate you, I think that's great. So keep up the amazing work. And for our viewers you. that want to learn more information and even join your workshops, uh, how can they do so? I think the best thing is just to find on YouTube or Instagram and then uh, inside uh, descriptions, there'll be some links and bios and things like that. So they'll be able to find it there. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's an honor and happy holidays and happy new year in advance. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Happy new year. Okay. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.